Hello, I'm John David Ebert, and welcome back to lecture uh, 7.3 of our Understanding Contemporary Art series. Right now, we're in the middle of a discussion of the works of James Turrell. Uh, we've looked at the evolution of his work uh, in general, with the exception of Roden Crater, which in this video now I want to focus upon. Turrell has been quoted as saying, I've, I've sort of loosely framed him as a land artist within the context of land art, largely and almost exclusively, really, because of Roden Crater, which is, after all, the largest land art project ever attempted. But uh, Terrell has been quoted as saying, uh, I'm not an earth artist uh, because I'm involved with the heavens. I'm involved with the sky. And that is precisely my point, that as a land artist, he is an artist who makes use of earthly structures and reappropriates them for gazing at the heavens. And as we will see with Roden Crater, essentially what he's done is to retrieve the ancient motif of the eye of God. The eye of God is a motif that is left over from the metaphysical age. It was one of the main constitutive features of the metaphysical age, where the eye of God was always uh, staring down at us. Terrell has taken the eye of God from that tradition and re-territorialized it and inscribed it on the surface uh, of a cinder volcano, an extinct cinder volcano, to look back up into the heavens, because in the post-metaphysical age, we have appropriated all of the powers of the gods. Everything that used to be thought to be out there is now down here and has been taken over by human beings, including the motif of the eye of God. And he's using, uh, basically, the way that he recreates Roden Crater is essentially as a gigantic optical device for bringing the heavens back and re-experiencing the sky as a macrosphere, uh, which is what we'll see here. So moving right into the discussion of Roden Crater, uh, this is what it looks like. He said he spent, um, he got his pilot his pilot's license at the age of 16, and he was flying around for many years looking for a suitable site. He would fly back and forth from the Rockies to the Pacific in his airplane, looking for a crater that would suit his specifications, and he found Rodden Crater here, which is an extinct cinder volcano about 400,000 years old, so it's not that old for a volcano, um, and it's, it sticks up above the landscape uh, about 41 miles to the northeast of Flagstaff on the western edge of the Painted Desert. Uh, it sticks up about six, six, it's very, very tall, like something like 600 um, feet uh, up in the air. And this is an image of it looking down uh, from space. And you can see right away that it, it looks very vaginal when looked at from space. And I think that this uh, this monument, this, this geological monument, would have been thought in the age of the Indo-Aryans, let's say, to be the perfect burial place for an Indo-Aryan warrior. Uh, they always design their tombs and their tumuli in the shape of uh, pregnant uh, great mothers, pregnant bodies of females who would give birth to the warrior once again in the afterlife, where he would reappear with all of his weapons. And uh, so note that essentially what Terrell is doing here is he's reinscribing uh, on the body of the great mother uh, the structures, optical structures of the father, father sky from the metaphysical age, uh, in which being in the world is being in the father, no longer being in the mother, but being in the father wherein we get, uh, in the age of the Greeks and the Jews, the paternal myth, the paternal womb, uh, such as Zeus who gives birth to Athena from out of his head, or Adam who gives birth to Eve from out of his side. The paternal womb that is pregnant with the logos, the cosmic word, is now going to be reinscribed uh, as the eye of God on this uh, into this volcano. And uh, here is uh, a topographical map of the site with Terrell's structures all aligned there. And if we look at them more closely, although I don't like this map here because uh, it's tilted down a, a little bit further, but we can see what he's doing here uh, is that there's the eye at the center, and then um, there's an east space, uh, there's a fumarole space, which has not been built, and a sun-moon space and an alpha tunnel leading to the eye of the crater, and there'll be a north space eventually, which has not been built yet, and a south space um, and some other structures. But right now we'll look at what he has built. Um, here is uh, another map that shows uh, when one enters into this volcano, one has to go down a 900, to, to reverse a 900 foot tunnel underground uh, toward the east portal. This is what the tunnel looks like the, it's, as it's been built so far. Uh, this is still not open to the public, so Terrell is still working on this. It's a Gesamtkunstwerk. It is a magnum opus, something that he has spent his entire life working upon. Uh, and here is the end of the 900 foot tunnel that one traverses, and one at the end of the tunnel sees uh, this circular opening that as one approaches and actually gets into the tunnel, becomes an ellipse. And so this is the east portal, which has an elliptical shape that note recapitulates in miniature the history of cosmology. It used to be thought that the planets, uh, as far as Copernicus was concerned, he wanted to center the, the cosmic spheres of Plato 
around the sun precisely because he thought they moved in perfect circles, but it turns out that they move in ellipses, and along with Kepler's laws of motion, uh, one of those laws is that planets uh, move in elliptical formation. And this is looking back, if we turn around and we look back at where we've come, we see the keyhole shape of the Alpha Tunnel through which we have traversed to get to this point. Now the ladder, of course, uh, is a Native American myth motif. Here it is, uh, here's a kiva with a ladder uh, that comes from the Hopi traditions and is meant to uh, recapitulate the myth of that is universal amongst the Native Americans of the Southwest, that the first men, the first people emerged from the underworld and they crawled their way up out of it, up a ladder into this world that we're living in now, uh, which for the Hopi was a fourth world, for the Aztecs it was the age of the fifth sun, and there's these levels that we're constantly climbing up out of to get to this world. So there are Native American myth motifs and Native American structures that Terrell has built into this, uh, this monumental magnum opus here. If we turn around and we wanted to go back the other way, the way that we came from, uh, we have the sun and moon room, uh, which has a central stone in the middle of it. Uh, it's basically a giant camera obscura. A camera obscura is simply something that has a hole drilled through it that receives an image on the inside. And the images that would be received from the light coming through the tunnels on either side of the stone here would be either the moon uh, at a certain time of the year. I think it's twice a year that it would appear through this uh, and cast its image onto this hole or the sun on the other side again twice a year, probably oriented to the solstices. Uh, so he's capturing the ancient megalithic uh, aspect of mythic civilization, the mythical consciousness structure where monuments are always oriented toward the solstices or to the North Star or to this or that constellation and so forth. But if we continue down the Alpha Tunnel in the other direction, we arrive at the central room, which is the eye of the crater, which looks like this here. This is the eye of the crater, with, which, has, which has one of Terrell's classic sky spaces uh, with the colors shifting uh, through the time of day, where he carves out a slice of the heavens. Um, but if we go outside and we traverse up through a walkway, we come up, and, and, and in doing so, note that we... In walking up that walk walkway, we will uh, retrieve the Native American myth of emergence from the underworld. It is as though we're coming up from out of the underworld, underworld to this area here, which is the central area of the, the plaza with the oculus, where the light comes through. And there are four stone benches uh, that are carved into the side of the oculus here, whereupon if one lies down on each of them, one has the experience of looking at the horizon. You'll notice that he's raised the rim and sculpted the rim with bulldozers and so forth in such a way as to eliminate the land. You can't see from this vantage point on the inside of the crater the landscape. And that's intentional on Terrell's part. He wants to sculpt the dome of the heavens and he wants to retrieve the ancient myth of the heavens as a giant all-enclosing reassuring macrosphere, a sort of father sky like Kronos lying on, upon the body of Gaia, uh, <clears throat> inside which uh, creation takes place as the result of the insemination of the earth by the powers of a masculine sky god. And Terrell is very uh, he is very uh, terrestrial in his, and celestial in his orientation for a land artist. Some of the architecture, too, you'll note here, recalls that of the, uh, the Jantara uh, Montara, uh, the, or the Jantar Mantar um, Astronomical Observatory at Jaipur, India, which was built in the 18th century. This is an image of the Nadivalya Yantra uh, at that observatory, and I think Terrell had some of this architecture in mind. Here's another image uh, of another yantra, the Shamrat yantra, which is basically, um, a it looks as though it's a staircase that ends and goes nowhere, but it's essentially designed for studying the planets. Um, and I believe it might be a sundial, I forget. Here's another structure from that observatory uh, that is also used for ascending up to get various different views of the planets. And this one here, uh, this one here you'll note looks very, that's uh, an overview of the observatory from a distance. Um, this is an unbuilt south, the, the model for the south space of Terrell's uh, crater here that alludes directly, I think, to the uh, observatory at Jaipur. Um, and you can see that it, what it will eventually be used for specifically for, for studying Polaris, the pole star, around which uh, it appears that all the stars are turning because of the Earth's rotation on its axis. There is a wobble to that axis which causes a phenomenon known as the precession of the equinoxes, and the north space, and that which has not been built yet, yet this is the model for uh, the north space, which will be designed specifically for studying the precession of the equinoxes, which is the, the wobble that the Earth gives, so that as it spins on its axis, it takes 25,920 years for it to move through a complete precession of the equinoxes, so that the solstitial point 
uh, um, uh, or rather the, the vernal equinox uh, um, arises at a different point along the horizon, a slightly different point each year, and it takes 25,000 years for that point to process through all 12 signs of the zodiac. And so um, Terrell has built this uh, observatory for, for the long haul here. And the other thing, too, is to compare it. He had in mind structures like the Egyptian pyramids, of course, um, and other structures such as Mesoamerican structures. Uh, the Egyptian pyramids were essentially aligned. They have northern entrances that are aligned also with the pole star. And the reason for that is so that the when the pharaoh is buried, the, the pharaoh was thought to have 14 cause. One, at least one of those cause was supposed to find its way using magical spells to find its way through the labyrinth of the pyramid and to get out that northern entrance shaft, which is not a northern entrance shaft at all. It's actually an exit shaft designed to shoot the ka of the pharaoh up to uh, the pole star, which then was Thuban, and his soul was thought to revolve along with the souls of all the other great ones, the deathless ones, because those stars never set below the horizon at that latitude, and he would circle around the, the pole star. And so Terrell has built a, a, a sort of a naked eye observatory here as a grand work of land art, the grandest yet achieved for retrieving uh, the structures of both the mythical age in terms of building these structures to align with solstitial uh, phenomena and astronomical phenomena, but also with the re-territorialization of the paternal optical gaze of Father Sky uh, looking out at the heavens and carving them up. And this is the last picture that I want to show that shows the volcano from the air. This, I believe, looks like uh, it's before he has begun to re-territorialize it as, as a great work of art. And so that gives us a sense of, a sense of what Roden Crater uh, is about and what James Terrell has done with it as one of uh, America's greatest living artists.